Hello, everyone. I'm a little early. I figured I'd jump on. I see about four of you. Obviously, I want to wait for a couple more people to join. It'd be nice to have a couple, 10, 15. But in any case, we have some topics on my mind. Isaac has a couple of things that he's thinking about. Obviously, the vast majority of people are probably here with regards to Digibyte on their mind. Digibyte is on my mind. Digibyte fits into the big picture. But to understand the potential for Digibyte, we have to understand the big picture first. And that is where my mind is. How do all the puzzle pieces fit together? That is what I'm always thinking about. How to best position myself, my family, to account for what is going on. Does anyone have any questions? I see we're down to one person. Let's wait for a couple, maybe. Can I get a mic check? Does anyone actually hear me? There's a little box, live chat to type in. If anyone hears me, can I get a thumbs up? Maybe. I'll be patient. Two twenty nine on a Saturday with what's going on lately. I look forward to relaxing, spending some time decompressing, processing, as I like to call it, defragmenting with regard to what's going on. I think about this stuff all week. It is imperative to unplug, pull yourself away, to process, to compile it so that you can best understand it, put things into perspective. Perspective is everything. That's the only way to understand things. You have to take yourself out of the picture and see things from the top down. And if you really want to understand, Digibyte, cryptocurrencies, finance, the way federal government works with regard to monetary policy, you have to take a step back. And you have to put all the puzzle pieces together and look at it from a top-down perspective. So that's why, as much as everyone wants to talk about cryptocurrency, you can't just talk about cryptocurrency because they're all parts of a bigger picture. It's a puzzle. And they all play a role. So that is what I think about. And I could go into great detail, and I will. We're going to talk for probably half an hour today. It's 2.30. We're going to talk to 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I'd like to see if anyone has any specific questions. I know most people are Digibyte-centric, which I'm absolutely happy to talk about. Isaac has one question posted in the chat. If anyone has any other questions, post it in the chat. That is what I'd like to do. I'd like to hear questions and answer questions. There's something on everyone's mind. And based on my professional expertise, I have a capacity to answer almost any question. I could probably answer every question, particularly because some of the answers could actually be that I don't know. But there's always a process to know, to find out information, to understand almost anything. Everything that I know is because of the internet including my profession as an Android developer. Go figure. 
I never went to school for Android programming. I learned everything by a Google search. I remember the first Google search, how to start an Android app. And that was it. Boom. 11 years later, I work at Microsoft. I build apps. Go figure. It's a funny thing how things work out sometimes. You got to love what you do. You got to do it well. And when that happens, the magic happens. So aside from my professional time with Android, my prof I really think my profession is attempting to understand the system because everyone just lives. But you're living in a system, a system governed by controls and processes that are defined by other people. Are the other people smarter? Are the other people not smarter? Who are the other people? We see people on media. We see people on television. I question a lot about what I see. And I like to think about more of what I understand. You have to de develop your own understanding for the way the system works. One more time. Does anyone want to write a question in the live chat? Or I could just keep rambling, which is something my wife says I love to do. All right, for the sake of the fact that this will be recorded, I'm gonna ramble. All right, so the biggest top-down perspective that I could think of is not the Federal Reserve. It fundamentally boils down to the United States Treasury. Ah, okay, that's actually a better way to start. The system, let's define the system. Okay, beautiful. Ahmed, I got you. Isaac, we start with that because that is a tantalizing thought in my mind. What system? Work is clearly not for a quick buck. Work sucks. Work, you're trading time for money. You're talking about equities markets, the stock market. There's two aspects to it. There's the aspect of long-term investing with regard to like a thesis, an idea. You commit to an idea and you invest in the idea and you wait for the idea to play out. Day trading, sure, quick buck. Technical analysis, you see the trends, you see the momentum of how things are playing out. And that's exactly what the RSI and the MACD fundamentally are, as well as like a Fib retrace. You can see where things are likely going to go based on historical precedents. And that obviously is for a quick buck. You know, somebody who is an investor in cryptocurrency, I don't do that. I'm not in it for a quick buck. I have a long-term thesis with regard to how cryptocurrency plays into the big picture. And that is something that I always reassure myself of. And if anyone's interested, every time I see the number go down, I'm usually buying. Maybe I wait until it goes down further, and then I buy more. My thought in my mind is accumulation. I want to have as much as possible. And that idea is backed by my understanding of the big picture, particularly the Federal Reserve, the United States Treasury, this bailout package, which is fascinating when I see the way it's presented on media. The media, the television, it's such a soap opera. There is no details. There is no one presenting the details of how it works and why it works. Everything you see on the mainstream media with regard to this bailout package is uh, an opiate. It's designed to satiate the masses, make people feel like they are getting a solution to something they may or may not need because people don't understand how the money where the money, how the money is being made or where the money is coming from. It all comes down to the treasury. 
I digressed. Isaac asked about a quick buck. Sure, same applies to cryptocurrency. I mentioned equities, I mentioned long-term investing strategy, have a thesis, believe in something, invest in it. I mentioned technical analysis with regard to equities, how to understand the trends. And the same thing applies to cryptocurrency. That The notion of a quick buck comes down to what's called volatility. Anything that's extremely volatile, you're going to be able to make a three, four, five, six, ten percent gain on in a relatively short period of time. That is historically cryptocurrency. And that as of like two, three weeks ago has been the stock market. This thing is moving around like it's a cryptocurrency. It's absolutely fascinating, downright disturbing, and actually real. So <laughs> am I playing it? No. Have I dabbled in TA and cryptocurrency? Day trading? Sure. Have I washed? Yes. What does that teach me? Don't do it. Why? Because I am an investor. I have an understanding of a big picture. I see it. And I have, it's not strong hands. That's a phrase. It's not conviction. That's a phrase. I see with undoubting clarity the way things are going to play out. Over time, when you pick a date in the future, far enough in the future, five, 10 years, sure, there's uncertainty, but things become quite obvious. Cryptocurrency, the potential is limitless. It's a replacement fundamental system comparable to the status quo in almost all regards. Absolutely fascinating. We're gonna talk about a couple of cryptocurrency projects. Hey, tenacious, deflation or inflation? Okay, this is absolutely fascinating. Um, Brent Johnson of the lifetime, as they call it. They are banking everything on deflation. They are thinking the dollar was going to the moon. And I tend to agree. But inflation is a property, a property that can be applied to a couple of different things. Inflation can be applied to the quantity of dollars, but can also be applied to the price of goods and services. So I, my understanding right now is that the US dollar is gonna freaking deflate. I also believe that the price of goods and services is going to inflate. This is actually pressing issue, income inequality. That's, these are very broad topics, but I got you. So what I know, let me, let me touch on that for a second. Everything's going to change. This event is a systemic change that, that has, it comes down to the amount of debt that exists, period. I have a couple of links in the description for today's live stream. The top one, if I recall correctly, is the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. The Fe, uh, not the Federal Reserve, I apologize. The, the Treasury's balance sheet. The Treasury has $4 trillion. The, the Treasury of the United States, there's $4 trillion, period. That's all that exists. It's all US dollars, all money, worldwide, $4 trillion. So if you hear anything, $25 trillion, $50 trillion, $100 trillion, where does it come from? So the, federal, the way that works is called... Um, Leverage, um, much the same way if any of you have tried like leverage trading cryptocurrencies or you know, same thing applies to Forex as well as equities, depending on the exchange. So leverage is 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 100 to 1. So the Federal Reserve has a 10 to 1 leverage on the money that the Treasury has. It's basically all money boils down to what's called M1 monetary supply of the United States Treasury. So if the United States Treasury has... $4 trillion. The Fed has access to 10 times that, $40 trillion. And that's everything, treasuries, bonds, securities, whatever. And right now, the United States Fed is pulling out all the stops, and they're buying literally everything, down to credit card debt, auto loans, corporate bonds, and... Oh, it, it's absolutely fascinating. And they're pulling it onto their balance sheet and they're doing it vis-a-vis -vis this mechanism. They just passed a 400, 
$554 billion stimulus package. So you guys see $2 trillion, $6 trillion in the news. I don't care what they say. I, I know what they're doing. That number is based on $554 billion that the Treasury is going to inflate the base monetary supply. Now, the Fed has a 10 to 1 leverage on that amount of money. And that means they have access to 4.45 trillion. So I don't know where they come to sit, but whatever. The point is $6 trillion doesn't fix this shit show. It's not even close. Um, and part of that $6 trillion is coming back to us as individuals. And a good portion is just being given to companies to bail them out. Um, let me just put everything in the, let me explain the magnitude of how fucked we are. There's something called the OTC derivatives market. It's the better part of a quadrillion dollars. If I recall correctly, I'm looking at a web page. Nope. I don't, I don't see it. So it's the better part of a quadrillion dollars, which means it's 600, let's say $650 trillion. There has been speculation that there has been a massive margin call shortfall of $25 trillion. So the Fed has instituted a bajillion acronyms to try and basically get the leverage money that they have because the Treasury printed $554 billion into these various markets basically buying up defaulting corporate bonds, defaulting credit cards, uh, defaulting CDs at this point, defaulting mortgage-backed securities, because who's going to be paying a mortgage in this situation? Three million filed for unemployment, sure as hell means a lot more were laid off, contractors, gig workers. I myself am a gig worker and was laid off temporarily. So the, um, what is it, the, the mortgage organization, let's say, who, who, who knows the numbers, they're saying that if everyone, 25% of people defer their mortgage payment, they're not going to have enough money to pay the interest requirements to maintain the mortgages. So basically, housing is going to need a bailout from the government. Clearly, the airlines are getting a bailout from the government. Clearly, the cruise lines are getting a bailout from the government. Oh, one of the gorillas in the room is the U.S. shale oil industry. The shale oil industry requires pretty much $60 a barrel to be profitable and to pay their bonds and debt and loans. Now, what is oil? Oil is at about, I think, 18, maybe even less. Point being, at those prices, oil production in the United States is not profitable, and the oil companies cannot pay their loans. So what you've seen on the news is uh, the U.S. government saying they're going to buy oil. Where do they put it? The Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Sure. How much? There's a limited supply. It's just a bunch of tanks. They can only buy so much oil. So when you hear on the news that they're going to do that, it doesn't matter. They're going to buy some oil. They're going to have to buy all the debt, all the bonds of all the shale oil producers in the continent of the United States just to avoid the bankruptcy, which is the loss of the money. And to top it all off, they're not profitable. Oil is not profitable. It's not a profitable business. So that's a lose-lose right there. Um, but the whole point of me stating these couple of things is that the financial system is not solvent. There's no way to pay the debt. Um, gets complicated with the swap lines. And this is what really Ralph Paul and Brent Johnson get into with regard to money flowing in and out of the United States. Right now, to pay, I'll be brief on this because I want to get into cryptocurrency. So, money 
the reason why the U.S. dollar spiked was because when all everything started to fall apart overseas, the debts that needed to be paid were U.S. dollar denominated. So all of a sudden, huge U.S. dollar denominated debts needed to be paid. So there was no way to get U.S. dollars because the banks didn't have the dollars. So the U.S. the Federal Reserve created the swap lines to basically loan U.S. dollars to countries, foreign banks that needed U.S. dollars to pay massive, massive multi-billion dollar debts. And that created a demand for dollars. A demand for dollars basically is the repatriation of dollars. Um, it's money flowing into the United States, which increases the value of the dollar. So as the swap lines program came online, all of a sudden they had a supply. And that's, if anyone looks at the DXY, that's exactly why we see it went straight up and boom, straight down. Because all of a sudden the demand for dollars was met. And the, the demand, the, thus the demand for dollars was not exceeding supply. Um, so in the short term, I think the dollar is going to tank pretty aggressively, but in the mid to long term, and mid to long term is probably in days, if not weeks, roughly. Um, Raul Paul and Brent Johnson, I, I think, are absolutely correct. And the United States dollars appreciate to the moon, and it's going to crush every single foreign currency, period, which I don't know car, uh, entirely how to speculate how that's going to play out. I think we're going to have systemic fundamental change of what is money across the board, especially foreign countries where their money becomes worthless. And our currency is so strong that it crushes every other country. No one, there's no trade. Everything is destabilized. No one's going to be buying anything from the United States because everything's going to cost a fortune. So we have absolutely no exports. So the whole balance of the system is basically completely thrown out of whack. And it's beyond thrown out of whack. It's to the point where it's not redeemable. It's not solvent. It's collapsing. Um, anyway, so this is where basically cryptocurrencies come in. Um, and frankly, gold. Uh, gold is ancient. And this is a good segue into cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's all about everything is about momentum and history and precedence. And because that has credibility and that uh, that gives a substance meaning. So gold has the ultimate meaning. It's ancient, thousands of years. And it has immense value. Why? Because people believe that it has immense value. It has a scarcity, supply and demand. So interestingly, as well, I could speculate how gold prices will appreciate. Gold prices will probably appreciate alongside the dollar appreciation as the system starts to unravel. And uh, that's just speculation. I'm not, I don't have any gold bets. And frankly, I could, you couldn't buy gold if you wanted to. If you tried to buy gold right now, you're not going to find it. You won't find coins. You won't find bars. You won't be able to be shipped bars. It doesn't exist. It's all bought either owned by the government or owned by people that have been accumulating the crap out of gold for the last several weeks, if not months at this point. Peter Schiff, you know he has a lot of gold. <laughs> and that's just the tip of the iceberg with investors. Um, crazy. Okay, so cryptocurrency is, frankly, I work with Digibyte. Why? Why do I do what I do? Well, clearly I have an engineering background and I'm a software engineer by trade. I currently work for Microsoft, as I said. And when I found Digibyte, it has such a unique community of openness and meaning and technical properties for the blockchain. It's absolutely fascinating. So I needed to make their Android wallet work. And that's why I got involved with Digibyte personally, why I did what I did and why, frankly, if I was relatively wealthy, that's probably the only cryptocurrency project I really want to work with. I think it has immense potential. I think it's overwhelmingly superior to Bitcoin. I think almost any crypto project is superior, technologically speaking, to Bitcoin. Pause. Let me see some questions.
Let me answer some questions real quick. You guys have stuff on your mind. Uh, issues like income inequality, yeah, uh, that means you just have to be diversified and uh, break free of uh, financial depression, which means you got to get a bit lucky. But if you're diversified, that increases the chance of luck. Uh, so there is a bunch of equities that I think are uh, what I would call new world unicorns. And I think there's good potential. Topic for another time. Clearly cryptocurrencies and clearly gold. I think as the system unravels, gold is going to be much more valuable than it is now. Three, four, five, six. Peter, a lot of uh, a lot of people think ten times the value. So you put ten grand in, you got a hundred grand. But then again, it gets more complicated because you're valuing it in terms of dollars. You say a hundred grand, but how much is a hundred grand worth? How much is it buying you? How much of a good and a service in the U.S. is it buying you? If all of a sudden a gallon of milk is twenty bucks, shit, a hundred grand is relatively worth less. So that's a complicated topic unto itself. Uh, collapse or kick the can down the road for another decade. They're going to try to do that. I don't think it's possible. This failure that's fundamentally occurring right now is the same exact thing that it's the same thing that happened in 2008. It never ended in 2008. It is just, that's exactly what they did. They kicked the can by printing, printing, printing. And they're not, I don't, I don't see how fundamentally they can save it this time. There isn't, they're going, the, though there is one way. The only way they could save the system is to print five, 10, 15 trillion dollars at the treasury level M1 base money. Oh my God. So you're talking about 10 to 1 leverage at the Fed on top of the M1 base money to pay off garbage debt. So the Fed is going to own everything. We're talking about nationalization of literally not just the United States, but debt all around the world that's denominated in dollars. They own everything. And all of a sudden, the base money supply of the United States has increased oh, a non-processable number, which means all of a sudden there's more money. In theory, that's going to destroy the purchasing uh, power of the dollar for goods and services in the United States. Um, and clearly, uh, increased base money. Now well, it gets more complicated with regards to this, uh, how money flows in and out of the United States, but that's going to destroy the purchasing power of the dollar for products and services in the United States. So the only way they kick this can down the road is basically to destroy the system. If they do nothing, the system implodes because the debts are going to collapse and fundamentally every business is going to fail. Um, and if they do something, they destroy the value of the dollar. So I'm not pessimistic. I'm extremely optimistic because people like me, there's a lot of people that are much smarter than me and we could change the world. I think cryptocurrency is a parallel infrastructure that has been in development for the last 11 years and has a, a profound capacity to be consumed as a public utility. It's free. Free. Oh my God. Why the hell are people paying Amazon cloud services when you could have some sort of decentralized implementation that's free? Where the money that's profited from the system is because people are actually contributing to the security of the system. And that's the future that I see in almost all regards. Okay, so that was kicked the can down the road. Uh, every country in the world has debts to whom? Okay, so the, every country has debts, and they're pretty much all denominated in U.S. dollars. Clearly, there's their domestic sovereign debts, but they're relatively trivial in size. Uh, the vast majority of the globally destabilizing debts are denominated in U.S. dollars. So that's who they have to pay. And in order to pay, when those debts either come due or fail, and there's like a margin call and there's not enough equity allocated to the debt, they need dollars. And that's where the U.S. swap lines, uh, all these three-letter acronyms that the Fed has come up with of late, it's coming to the picture. They're trying to move money around to prevent the implosion of the amount of debt that's out there. They're trying to keep the debt inflated and not implode. And that's their attempt to kick the can. They're going to have to do 
a lot more to kick the can to the point where I don't think they can kick the can. And if they actually figure out how to kick the can, it's going to tank the value, the purchasing power of the dollar. It's going to destroy every fiat currency around the world. And as Raul Paul and Brent Johnson hypothesize, it's going to send the value of the U.S. dollar relative to other countries through the stratosphere. So that's who has to pay for the debts. Uh, doesn't mean there must be a debt cut worldwide. Okay, so it's not that there has to be. The debts are imploding. It's Right now we have a domino effect going on, and that's basically why the Fed instituted the swap lines, because the debts around the world are being called, they're being margin called. There's not enough margin to sustain the actual debt. The, 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 either a bond or whatever credit that has been issued to someone, people have to post collateral. So now that this turmoil is occurring, that collateral is inadequate to sustain the debt. But these companies need to come up with U.S. dollars, and they, the banks in every country doesn't have them. So the Federal Reserve has a swap line where money is transferred from the swap line to foreign banks, which can then be distributed to these failing institutions, whether it be a bank or a company, it doesn't matter, that need the dollars to make the debt whole. And that's, that's the problem. There's so much debt that's failing that they can't get enough dollars to service the debt and make them whole with regard to collateral requirements or whatever. It's an absolute hot mess. Isaac says, what are you saying? Well, I figure out to cook with stuff in pantries and post, but sure. So I, listen, everything and anything can be put on the blockchain. We're talking, and this is where Digibyte comes in. Let me talk about crypto. 259. Let's talk about crypto. So each project has its own merits, absolutely fascinating merits. Uh, Bitcoin is what I see as liquidity. Uh, it's the store of value with regard to cryptocurrency. Now, if you put that in the context with regard to its decrease in value right now, there's no volume. There's no volume to trading. So it's completely susceptible to obviously manipulation, but it's like, it's not $200 billion anymore. Let this thing get to $10 trillion, and then you're going to see stability emerge, and it'll be a great source of liquidity. Um, liquidity is imp that's everything. It's all about leverage, and that's the way the whole current status quo systems works, is you get liquidity, and then you leverage on top of it to expand. You borrow, and you get credit, and bonds, and, and debt, but... So I don't know how that's going to, how the new world's going to work in that regard, but that's what Bitcoin is. And that's, if you think that the system currently is unstable, is not solvent, is going to fail, there's only three places to put your money, period, four, four, if you got stones. <laughs> so I would argue US dollar, Brent Johnson, Raul Paul, that's where they're putting a good portion of their allocation. Gold, sure, you follow little Peter Schiff on Twitter and you're going to want to buy gold. Uh, cryptocurrency, because holy crap, it has the potential to be the architecture and infrastructure of a new world. And frankly, it's free, which means who in their right mind as a company is not going to consume it and build products and services that use it for free. Free data storage, free networking, free transfer of information and that's what digibyte is is uh, asset management so the fourth one I, I do believe there's going to be equity unicorns that's uh, what i like to call it because all that's pertinent as the dollar's purchasing power becomes useless is that the equity appreciates faster than the relative depreciation of the, the or not the, the relative decrease in the dollar's purchasing power domestically here in the United States. And I think there's going to be a systemic change with regard to many industries. I mean, look, we're talking about a 50% loss of all restaurants nationwide. We're talking about everyone's laid off factory-wise. 
Why are they going to rehire workers when they could just probably build robots? It's just everything's going to change. This event has forced the hand that everyone has been thinking about for the last decade. And it's like, now that we have a chance to rebuild everything, going to rebuild everything. It's going to change. So this leaves me with the most awkward feeling of not fear, but disappointment. That the system failed, but also this wonderful feeling of excitement for the potential of what I know can be built. It's an extraordinary, extraordinarily disturbing experience as well. Uh, also an extraordinary opportunity historical in all regards. Doesn't mean there must be a uh, Yeah, DGB. Tabak, yeah. Digibyte is asset management. Out there, period, that is comparable with regard to its properties. Clearly, plenty of projects are immutable. Um, sure, other projects have, see, the XRP that Please, I don't even want to get into XRP. What a tragedy. Um, Syscoin has a fast portion of its protocol, but fundamentally, Digibyte is raw UTXO. It's basically Bitcoin better. Um, that doesn't mean that Digibyte can necessarily overtake Bitcoin. Why? Because of history, precedence, precedence and momentum. And this is why gold will not be supplanted, usurped, replaced anytime soon. Momentum is everything. Bitcoin is stuck. It's, it's infused, ingrained in people's mentalities, entrenched. And that's why it is what it is. Not because it's better. It has wonderful properties. It's immutable. It's, that's, it's decentralized. And that's what matters. And that's what matters with the base cryptocurrency. It's the base fundamental cryptocurrency. That's what Bitcoin is. Uh, community based in focus. Well, uh, Isaac, crypto is a free public utility that is supported by involvement by the public. It's like, can you imagine? Like, I, I, I could say working for Amazon to support their infrastructure and they pay you, but that's kind of like employment, but this is not that this is like you setting up a system that sits in the corner of your house that supports an Amazon data center. And they, they pay you to have your system run. And that's true. And that is what blockchain technology is where the general public has a capacity to contribute to the functionality of the centralized infrastructure and potentially profit from it. Likely profit for them with regard to master node projects, uh, Blocknet, Syscoin, Zcoin, a plethora of others. You're able to contribute to the stability and security of the network, and you receive compensation for that service. And it's absolutely fascinating. Not that I would recommend Digibyte incorporate any of those types of blockchain features, but uh, why? because I wouldn't touch much of Digibyte. I, uh, it is what it is. It has established protocols, functionality, defining, making clear its utility. And okay, fine, you, we can change things, but the same effort and due diligence must be applied such as the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade. You could have no ill effects of an upgrade. It, needs to be perfect because as of right now, the Digibyte blockchain is sound, reliable, and uh, consistent. That cannot be jeopardized or taken for granted in any regards. That is one of the most important characteristics of a blockchain because there's a lot of garbage out there. History only takes you so far. You need stability and reliability, predictability, something that is dependable, is bankable. That has so much meaning with regard to functionality, uh, being consumed with regard to businesses, products, and services, as well as from an investment perspective. I think they're going to be a leader for a good amount of time. But, you know, uh, yeah. Okay, so okay, so Bitcoin is going to be the leader, in my opinion. I don't see something usurping Bitcoin, but 
it's rising tides rise all boats. Everything is going to appreciate. We're approaching the having, and fundamentally, I believe supply and demand rules everything. And demand has, I don't think, changed to any meaningful degree. And theoretically, if things keep going the way they're going, demand is going to substantially increase, and supply, knowingly, is going to substantially decrease. That's everything. So in time, 18 months, it does hurt. I buy crypto because I hate the current system and I want to be part of a new system. At least that's my belief. Whether that is actually going to change my life, bear fruit, profit, appreciate. Uh, of course I care, but in some regards I don't care because there is no other options. You can't buy any physical gold. I would buy gold. I'd buy a fair amount of gold if I could, but there is absolutely none of it. And I already have dollars, meaning I, you could long the dollar. You could um, buy DXY, but that's not, that's not a tangible asset. And that's why cryptocurrency is so potent and powerful. It's, it's something that could be transferred. It can be used as money, as well as utility, functionality. What a versatile phenomenon. Substance, met metaphorical substance. What a versatile entity. Something like that. Uh, did you buy privacy? I don't think it needs to. Plenty of privacy coins. And frankly, privacy is quite controversial from a political and legislative perspective. Uh, they're not going to like privacy because the government's going to want to have transparency. Um, I don't know how that's going to play out with regard to privacy coins, Zcash, Zcoin, Pivx, whatever. Uh, but I think it's best for Digibyte to maintain itself as it currently is. Maybe an algo swap. I'm not going to push back too much against an algo swap. Maybe the signatures, some Bitcoin upstream pulls, rebases. I think that's reasonable, but I don't think too much effort needs to go into uh, fundamentally reimagining how Digibyte is built. It does what it does. And frankly, it, that's what I love to think about. Nothing could be done with Digibyte. Nothing has to be done with Digibyte, and it's going to do what it does from now until, oh, dot, 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 ellipse, open-ended. And if it does that, if it merely continues to do exactly what it's doing, that's all it needs to do for it to make a phenomenal impact on literally the daily lives of everybody, society, culture, everything. It just needs to do what it's currently doing. So just buy a little bit. A little bit of everything. There's so much potential. 1%. Sure, keep the cash. Oh, my God. So that's investment talk. <laughs> Be diversified, please. Do not buy one of every... Do not buy everything of one thing. There's so many wonderful projects. Uh, uh, Bitcoin, Blocknet, Syscoin, Ethereum, Link, Unibright, or the bridge to the old world, Digibyte, asset management, absolutely tantalizing the properties in consideration of, the, of asset management, downright fascinating what that means. Absolutely incredible. Anyway, ah, what do we got? What do we got? What are the plans for Digibyte for the rest of 2020? Um, I know folks are working on uh, shore signatures and a variety of other uh, relatively minor upgrades, maybe an algo swap, but I advocate for not doing much. I advocate the extent of what I possibly fathom advocating for uh, is upstream uh, rebasing, uh, which is basically just pulling in whatever Bitcoin has done new into the Digibyte code base, uh, because that would have little to no potential what's called um, uh, regression issues. And that 
has the optimal potential to maintain uh, consent, uh, an unchanged functionality while adding some new features. And that's it. So that's, that's just it for Digibyte. Doesn't need to do anything. Hey, some Josiah. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. I like to talk. Clearly, for the last 45 minutes, I've been talking to myself, kind of. My wife says I like to talk. So this is, a, this is an enjoyable way to vent and just share my ideas and my observations. And I think it's so important to try and understand what the frick of frack is about to go down globally and how all the puzzle pieces come together, how cryptocurrency fits into the picture, potential considerations and choices of what to do and how to respond to protect yourself, protect your finances, finances, to protect your value, how much value you have. At this point, I think the best statement is we're in protect value mode. <laughs> sure, some traders, a lot of them, uh, was it Bill Ackerman did like a $2.2 billion short play on this fiasco. Oh my God. Imagine pocketing $2.2 billion betting this thing was going to implode. All right. Well, that boy's a short. He shorts everything and he loves that game. So God bless him. I think um, we're in for a rough ride. Uh, my town is locked down. We're not allowed out. New York is a hot zone. They're tracking down people in Rhode Island with New York license plates and my understanding detaining them, forcing them into a 14 day quarantine. Absolutely fascinating. Josiah says, do you think Digibyte should keep going then on the same path as the BTC core code base, or would it be better diversifying and strengthening our point of difference? Okay. Kind of briefly discussed it. I love rediscussing things. I think that if Digibyte does absolutely nothing as of today, that's all it needs. It needs to do nothing at all. So anything that gets done is a plus, is better, it's good. I don't want to say better than nothing because it doesn't need to do anything. So it, the most important thing I think for Digibyte is to minimize regression potential. Minimize issues. If an upgrade has any potential issues, it should not be done. Take another six months, take another year. And that's all good then because to benefit from consumption when the time is right. Yeah, we're doing okay. I got my family in the pool right now. They're, they're hanging out. Everything's good. I, listen, my wife thought I was crazy three weeks ago when I'm like, honey, for the love of God, go to uh, oh, um, Costco, big warehouse supplier, and just uh, and get $500 worth of stuff. And she's like, wow. <laughs> so she did that, and then I went out and got a couple hundred dollars more, and I just kept loading up on stuff. And this was before anything started well, not far before but just before and uh if i asked her nowadays if i said honey was that the right decision she would probably look at me like this why do i have to say anything you, you playing me stop playing with me now because of course i was right i saw this coming real estate all right whoever owns real estate is gonna get destroyed. I own my home, I am prepared. I'm not selling, I'm, I live in my home, why? Because I don't, I don't uh, you sure, I care about the value of my home. I'm not moving ever. Tell my wife I'm never moving ever again. Moving is the most traumatizing experience a human being could go through trying to move your home. So I, in some regards, Okay, so uh, an important philosophical, personal concept I subscribe to, you have to detach yourself from money. What matters is value. My house has value because I live in it. Therefore, it's relative value in dollars. I don't care. I'm not moving. So the value in dollars doesn't mean anything to me. 
I, I still have its value as a place to live and take care of my family and everything that I need. If you want to really know what I think, I think my house is going to lose 50% of its value. I think mortgage-backed securities are going to fundamentally implode. I think in the United States, a good portion of all mortgages, no one's going to pay, defaults through the roof. Deferrals alone are going to require a bailout from the government to prevent these very large mortgages, mortgage brokers and mortgage-backed security dealers from imploding. Yeah, so there's some shit we're going to see. This is just starting. If one more person says we're going to be back to work in two weeks, I think we're going to be nauseous. Listen, China welded doors shut. They welded doors shut. And they were locked down for two plus months. And they're about to start locking shit down again to prevent a second wave. Okay. <laughs> and the U.S. is going to be ridiculous hot zone. It's going to be way worse than China because we're no, not only not welding doors shut, people have been running around for the weeks. This virus is everywhere. Makes me... Uh, it's not sobering, but it's disappointing. It's obvious what's going to play out. I don't want it to, but it's obvious. It's what it is. Everyone needs to stop looking at what's in front of their face and start thinking about repercussions, implications, ramifications, consequences, causality, cause and effect. These kids on the beach in Fort Lauderdale brought it home to mom, pop, grandma, and grandpa. That'd be brutal. In New York City with their subway, it's called a vector, a means of transmission. That thing was li it's literally an artery transferring this virus throughout every corner of the five boroughs. That's what it was. It's not, you could speculate that it was either how much it did it, did it do it a lot, do it a little, but holy shit, it transferred it everywhere. Why? Because the subway goes everywhere. It's not even like really doubtable. The question at this point is, does every single person have it? Are there any people that are not at some point going to be sick with this virus? The problem, this doesn't end. There is no end. If you, if you all of a sudden you quarantine a couple of people, you quarantine the sick people and you let the healthy people go to work, the healthy people eventually get sick. They're going to get more un, relatively unhealthy or elderly people sick. They become transmitters, vectors, asymptomatic transmitters. Is there, we don't even know if we need to the current situation. And anyone that says otherwise is is not genuous being disingenuous there is no way it's not possible i mean in theory an antivirus uh, 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 a vaccine fine sure possible but that's not today it's not tomorrow it's not a week it's not a month a month may be experimental but Whatever. It is uh, it is what it is. We're locked up. I'm locked up. So, hey, I'm going to be doing live streams because I'm locked up. I'm stuck in the house. That's going to be fun. We're going to be able to spend time together and I'm going to be able to dump my brain out there. Recommend a movie. You know what's messed up? I haven't really watched much TV in the last three weeks. All I do is really try and understand what we're about to experience. I guess it's not depressing. It's just what I enjoy. I need to be prepared. I need to understand. It gives me purpose and meaning. It's why I do what I do. There is no way to define an end, period. 
And then the end comes when either you have herd immunity, which is like 70% of people that have a immunity to the virus, or there's a vaccine which would establish herd immunity. <laughs> that is the end of a pandemic. So there is, as of right now, there is no end. It has to be open-ended. Anyone that puts an end on it is just speculating at best. Oh, okay, that contagion because this, the, this virus does not have a hundred percent death rate. It's, uh, listen, the, the, the virus is comparable to what happened in 1918, 1919 in the Spanish flu. A lot of people are going to die if they don't continue. So if you compare it to what they did, they had very different strategy back then. We have full lockdown, so the odds are, depending on how different currents, cu countries actually implement lockdowns. Um, we should be able to control uh, casualties and fatalities. But here's the here's the kicker. This is a modern civilization compared to 1918 and 1919. So what's pertinent is um, fatality is irrelevant. I don't mean it like that. What I mean is that what, what the goal is, is to not overwhelm the medical system. Um, you can't exceed the ICU beds. You can't have an outright medical shit show. You need to be able to control the situation. Put people that need ventilators on ventilators. So that's the goal. As of right now, that's the goal. So you mentioned four day day four of four weeks. No, the goal is to get the amount of sick people lower than the quantity of ICU beds that are available. That's the immediate goal. Second is oh sh hell yeah. So I don't know about lightning. You don't need lightning. Come on, bro. Anyway, Digivite is lightning. <laughs> um, you don't need lightning. You, can, you, just, you batch the transactions. Or you, you, you run you know, countless recipients through any given transaction. Or, or, and that, that's the second level. Uh, you have a system that batches transactions and, and bulk packs multiple recipients in any to given transaction. And boom, you got second level. So frankly, it's not it's not a side chain. It's not a lightning network. It's literally just a website that packages and obviously like a centralized database that once it reaches a threshold, deploys the pending transactions and that's it. And, and I think that is all that's needed. And that's not relatively sophisticated. That's just a queue. You just need to queue stuff. And then once you reach a threshold, you broadcast. And... Oh, now you don't need blockchain. Now you need old school, ancient companies have done this a thousand times over the last 20 years. Uh, website queuing system for transaction dispersion. And I wouldn't think too much into it from a blockchain perspective because it's complicated. Why build shit that other blockchains are doing? You don't need to. Digibyte literally just needs to do what it's currently doing. And what will happen is when the utility and value is realized and the fact that it's free is realized and the rest of the financial world is imploding, it's going to be used. It's going to be consumed. Okay, that's a fancy four-letter acronym. PSBT. Uh, I would imagine that's a Bitcoin protocol referring to 0.19. Sting. FICO. It's old school. Enjoy. Listen, the most important thing I could say is exactly what I'm going to do after this video. Unplug. And then once you unplug, find some of my tweets later tonight where I fill in the gaps of what everyone missed. But unplug. Relax. Forget about the mayhem. Relax with the family. Appreciate the fact that you're not sick. And enjoy. And obviously be prepared. So if you need to get food for like a couple of months, the time was last month. But if you need something, you really need it now. It's getting late. If not, it may be too late. Uh, favorite possible use case for DigiAssets? No, I didn't talk about DigiAssets. Listen, Digibyte, fundamentally, the most, it, at minimum, it's going to be used for asset management. These would be the DigiAssets protocol. And uh, integrated with whatever torrents for file storage, which is another decentralized protocol. Uh, that's um, that's a no-brainer, and that was part of my list that I posted a couple of days ago. I see fundamentally Bitcoin liquidity, Ethereum is computing, 
his contracts, his escrow. It's all, everything that everyone knows Ethereum is. Uh, Syscoin is a wonderful bridge between um, liquidity, Bitcoin, and Ethereum contracts. Uh, Blocknet uh, probably has the capacity to do something similar to Syscoin with the Thanos swaps. They need the Ethereum integration at some point. That Blocknet is awe-inspiring, the potential that it has. It, it, the, the decentralized SPV of its X router protocol is, I, I literally am at a loss for words for describing its potential. That is, they describe themselves as the, what, Internet of Blockchains? And that, I, I get lost for words trying to, come up with a say how to say what that means for the system the potential infrastructure functionality that it provides is just awe-inspiring what that means there is zero other projects period that do anything comparable to blockman fine there's other projects that do atomic swaps come out great lovely dandy atomic swaps the centralized spv so Cool. I like Komodo. I like Stratus, Sidechains, um, Link, Unibright, Old World Bridge, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Everyone do yourself a favor and just Google the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and see who's involved with it. You're talking Microsoft, IBM, and a bajillion other companies. And they're working to make Ethereum the enterprise. Holy crap, simple. That's real. This is real. Got to own some. It's the bottom line. All right, guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, if anyone has any questions, we have a couple of minutes. I'm happy to answer anything else. Otherwise, this is a pretty good first YouTube live stream. I think I got the technology down pat. I know how to press play and press record and all that silly configuration stuff. And next time will be much more reliable. Going once, 